Hey everyone, it is me, Steve. It is February 6, 2018. Time is about 1737, and I believe it's like 15 degrees Fahrenheit out. I'm actually recording this with my camcorder, because every time I try to do this on YouTube, a recording, it stops. And if I try to record it on my phone, my memory gets full. So we're going to do it this way. I hope I'm in frame, and I hope you can see everything. I think I am, because I can kind of see the reflection back there. But anyway, this is GeoRant time, but this is going to be kind of a special GeoRant. I was going to do one on structural geology, but I think I'm going to say that for a Geophiles episode. So what am I going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about the professional geology tests. I am a licensed professional geologist in two states, in Illinois and Indiana. I took the test back in 2011 in Illinois and subsequently got my license in Indiana. Both are active. I'm going to get into that test part here in a minute. But most states like, um, you know, engineers, architects, surveyors, we can get a professional license. Now, everything I'm going to tell you is going to be on the ASBOG site. The ASBOG is the test that you, or the tests that, well, people refer to them as ASBOG tests, that you have to take in order to get your license. There's two of them. Okay, um, one I believe is called the Fundamentals of Geology, and the other is Practice of Geology, I think. And um, the requirements vary from state to state, um, but basically in Illinois, when I took the test in 2011, I not only had to have a bachelor's degree, which is pretty standard across the board, but I had to have worked four years under professional geologists and get that person to sign off and say, yeah, I'm good at what I do. And in order to take the test, there's also most states have a core test or core class requirement. Like you have to have so many um, uh, hours in, you know, you got to have sedimentology and structure, field geology, all that stuff. Some schools will have an environmental science major that can kind of work its way in there and you can take the PG test but I want you to be very aware of something that I'm going to get to in a minute in more detail it's a geology test all right I'm going to go more into that when I give you my own personal advice here at the end by the way disclaimer the ASBOG test I am not affiliated with it in any way uh, the only time I ever gave money was to take the tests initially through a consult or a private consultant I think administered the test um, I don't know anyone on the board. I'm not familiar with the members. I do not get money from them. I do not receive money from them. All right, this is just me explaining some stuff to you so you can do less digging. Now, here we have a map, 2017 map. The green are states that have professional geology licenses. The gray are not. This was kind of an error. Down here you see a VSR, and that was orange. There are no VSRs anymore. Uh, this map is also included within another document they have where they corrected that, but I guess on this they didn't see it. And it really surprises me. There are some states that don't have it that really should, like Michigan, Copper Country, Alaska, North Dakota. All right? I don't know why these states don't. I actually have a pretty good read. I know why Michigan doesn't, but we're not going to get into that. That's a talk for another time. Um... But, um, oh, where did I, my train of thought just derailed. The, like I said, <clears throat> sorry, I'm, I'm kind of congested a little. The requirements are different from state to state a little bit, all right? Um, and once you take the tests and pass them and get your license in a state, it is pretty easy to get it in another state because you've already taken the tests. You just need to fill out some paperwork, give them the money, and most states will give you your your uh, license there. California, I know, is an exception to this. They make you take an additional test. And to any geologist in California, my two cents, get out. The market's oversaturated. You are fighting an uphill battle. But that's just my two cents on that. But anyway, um, the tests, I'm going to give you some, I took it in 2011. And the highlighted part here, as you can see, that was a low success rate. <laughs> that year, but I passed both first time I took them both the same day. Because in Illinois, a lot of states you can take like the first one out of college, like a lot of EITs will do, engineers, and then take the second one if you, uh, after your work experience. Illinois doesn't offer that, at least they didn't then. So I took them both the same day um, after the experience and everything. But generally, just to let you know, these tests are not easy to pass. Okay, um, according to the, what in the year are these numbers? Um, I pulled this directly from their website. This is last year's numbers, 2017. The 
first test has the fundamentals of geology test has a 61% rate overall. And it seems like the more people retest, the lower that success rate goes down. And the practice of geology only it has a little does a little better 73% uh, success rate. So everything I'm going to tell you here, other than when I give my personal, you know, two bits and advice at the end, is is on their website available for view. It's not some big uh, secret. So just to let you know, it has been seven years since I took the test. I do not remember any of the questions, and even if I did, I wouldn't tell you any of them. Um, <laughs> that would be an ethics violation. So. If you have any questions for me, if you ask me specific questions about what was on the test, I'm going to tell you to go somewhere else. All right. Um, um, study materials are available. I don't think ASBOG officially sanctions any of them. I did spend a lot of money on study materials as well. Um, when you go in, uh, when you go in to take the test, you can only bring in a non-programmable calculator with you. Um, pencils, you can bring in things like a geology protractor, which I strongly recommend, and a stereo net, which I also strongly recommend. I will get into why when I give you my advice, but um, when I give you my two cents on the whole thing. But um, the ASBOG tests, they are a national test. Um, they are administered by the state, of each state's regulation. There's a pool of questions, I guess, that they pull from. And um, they, uh, you know, um, they, they switch it up so you, so you can't give the answers to your buddy in line and cheat. So, um, but I'm going to start getting into the, into my, what personal advice about this stuff. Right? I'm not going to recommend any study materials or anything like that. Uh, I will say I did not get any flashcards. I did not think they were useful. Um, but if you get used out of that kind of stuff because this test is not a memorization test either but it is a geology test let me say that again these are geology tests they are not project management tests they are not billing the client tests and there are ethics questions on there but it is not an ethics test I think Ontario's and Canada is more weighted to ethics but they are geology tests you need to know geology. And I noticed that the people I know that tend to fail the most are the people who are really specialized, like those who have gone on to get master's degrees and like say hydrology. Uh, it's also not, I mean, hydrology is on the test, but it's not a hydrology test. Or to be project managers who have been not doing anything for five, six, seven years, going there thinking, oh yeah, I manage all these sites, I'm going to go in there and pass, and then they get like a 20%. Um, so be aware, I'm going to say it one more time, this is a geology test, all right? I've highlighted just my strong points here, but basically this is from their website. This is stuff that is, they feel you need to know in order to be a professional geologist and the stuff that is likely to be on the test. They actually do have a pie chart in here telling you how the FG the fundamentals and the practice are broken out. So I'm not giving away any secrets here. And this is for 2017, I believe. Right? And that's in this document. This is all free online, too. I'm not giving you any stuff you have to pay for. <laughs> so, um, by the way, the cats are going crazy. Uh, is that the deal with it, I guess? All right. My two cents, my advice. You're going to need to stop. All right. It is not a memorization test. There are things on there that are memorization. When you go to take this test, each question is going to have an A, B, C, and D. That is it. You do not get partial credit. And I don't know if it's curbed anymore or not. I don't think it was even when I took it. So you get it right or you get it wrong. There is no midpoint. Okay? So you need to remember that. All right? Um, when you study, like I said, it's not all memorization because when you do things like the geophysics part and the structure part and that, there are problems you need to figure out. And that's why they like bring the calculator in. 
Um, I solved everything, well, almost everything, there's a couple exceptions. I solved almost everything graphically. I am proficient with a geologic protractor and a stereo net. And if you are proficient with those two things, you can knock out a problem in less than 30 seconds. Plus, it forces you to think in three dimensions. Something plugging numbers onto a calculator doesn't do, okay? Um, and if you are off a degree or two, who cares? All right? We've all taken tests in college, and we all know how professors like to trick us. Okay? If you solve things graphically, you know, off a degree or two, you should be okay. However, if you are fumbling around on a calculator, and remember that you have a non-programmable one, so you're going to stop, write stuff down, go backwards. It could take you up to five minutes to solve a problem. These are time tests. Right? And if you flip a sine or a cosine, I mean, that flip could be on the test as one of the answers. All right? And you're not thinking spatially when you're plugging and chugging on a calculator. All right? So that's my advice to you on that. All right? Um, I already covered, covered the study thing. Um, I don't know. I, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. I think I've covered enough and rambled enough right now. But anyway, if you have any questions or want me to give... You know, you know what I think you should do to help you out if you are looking to take these tests. Just comment below. Um, you know, or if you have any general questions, like a lot of people don't know, geologists can get licenses. Um, please feel free to comment below if you ask me any specific things about questions, how they're arranged on the test, or anything. I'm not going to answer them primarily because it would be an ethics violation, but also because it's been seven years. But anyway, I guess that's it, and I hope you learned something.